you grew up on a farm. Mm. Uh, the, your vision was to become a farm lady. You said, but this boy is going to be a professor one day. Dead. Yes, that we are admitted. We, we kneeled down and then we kissed our student cards. He said, today is the beginning of all your problems, your troubles at this university. We have produced a lot of students. And I think maybe, you know, one of me, personally, my attachment to the University of Limpopo is that I've seen it transform the lives of poor people. That's where now, now, now the issue of of, 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 of a degree in education comes in. That, that's where the mm. issue in development management. Oh, you are a PhD student mm. supervising a master student who can mm. be like you. You know, academia can be very toxic. And I, I'm, I'm influenced by the statement and the vision of one uh, professor, Ephraim Mukhalom. Not Mukhalom, just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Come to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino, uh, hosted by DJ Cappuccino, known as Fortune Maswangani, son of Gezani. Today I'm blessed to be having a highly esteemed Person. I'm having Professor Sabola, a distinguished academic, a visionary leader, renowned for his pioneering contribution in the field of public administration and development in Africa. As a founder and of the Institute of Public Administration and Development in Africa, which is called IPADA, Professor Sabola has been at the forefront of advancing public sector excellence, promoting sustainable development, and fostering innovative governance practices across the continent. Welcome to Just Talk with DJ Kapachin. Like I entered the prof. Reading, 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 yeah. uh, Mr. DJ. What's that, You know, having um, someone that I highly respect, someone I look up to, someone who taught me how to write uh, uh, academic writing. It's really an honor because of the many people that we have approached to come here. Some feel that our podcast is still new. Some feel that, no, it's not for them. But for a giant like you, to, to come and uh, agree to share your life with us. We really appreciate and welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. D. Yeah. Professor, <laughs> please take us back. Mm. Um, we want this young boy. Give us a glimpse of this young boy. I don't know where you grew up, whether it was a township, village, a suburb, whether it was Europe, wherever it was. Okay. Just, just, just bring, us, bring us together to understand where you come from because we want to connect the dots on what actually led to Africa to have a giant like you? Thank you, uh, Mr. DJ. I should also thank you very much for inviting me to come to your, broad, to your podcast. Yeah. Uh, I see it more as a broadcast than a podcast. No, it is. It is broadcast. Yeah. Yes, but thank you very much for inviting me. Mm. I also feel very much honored to, 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 to come to be part of your your podcast mm. uh, a good question that you want to know yeah uh, where I come from who I am uh, I was raised with love mm. and to love by my two parents who are now late my mother, um, Mava Weselina Sebola, and my father, Mokukupit Sebola. Mm. And I was raised in a, a, an environment where people can say it's not an environment where one can manage to step up in life and become something because I grew up on, I was born on a farm. Mm. Uh, on the 4th of November 1968, and probably in a madhouse. A farm? A farm. Mm. Farm at old days. You, you were one of those who were not born in the hospital? No, 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 no. I was never born in a hospital. Mm. I was born 
uh, my parents had seven children mm-hmm. and I am the third sibling of my 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 parents seven children mm. and currently we are five we lost two and 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 uh, uh, growing up uh, 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 in a farm what was it was it your farm like family farm or ke family le gore ne lena le nona le somebody owning it and you were staying there what was happening there no it <laughs> no, there's no way in which we would have owned a farm. The farm belonged to a white man. Mm. And then uh, I grew up in a farm that was owned by a white man. And then we were also living with other families mm. on the farm. And then uh, uh, that was in old days. Yes. For, for, for people that know old days, old days, it's a, it's, 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 it's a one kind of, 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 of a farmland very far from from a, from the real life situation that people understand because i remember uh, i i didn't know even then the run mm. until until around 1986 from being born in 1968 i think you'll understand that the dendron was the town dendron no there's a there is a small village town called old days yeah. And therefore, all days being the smallest village town, then there are farms around it. I think I was born around about 30 kilometers from the village town of all days, but all those farms are called all days farms. So, so since 68, you went to Dendron 93? No, I think around, I didn't know in Dendron around 1986. Let alone Jobek. Or Jobek was, no, 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 was Jobek, a dream. Jobek, 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 Jobek was a dream. <laughs> Even Pulukwan was a dream. I started knowing then Ron and Pulukwan around 1986 when I was doing my, 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 my Form 4. I, I mean, my Form 4 then. But I want us to go there, Prof. Yeah. You were in a farm. Where was the school? Like, where you got your primary education? There, there, were, there were no schools on the farm. There were no schools or there were not clearly nearby schools. The first school that I attended was at the border between uh, uh, South Africa and and it's just a corner South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, mm. a place called Pond Rift. There was a farm school, a very small, small hut uh, where our parents just decided that uh, they were told that there was a primary school, there was a school in that area. Mm. And then uh, I think we were around, I started schooling at the age of nine because remember schooling was not a priority when we grew up. I you, started at the age you, of five. When, when, you, grew up, when you, grew up, you grew up on a farm, mm. uh, the, your vision was to become a farm laborer like your parents were. That's, that, that, that was our vision. That's sad. But then it happens that at some stage, there was this school at Pond Rift called Maranchi Primary School. It was opened by a white man, so that I think his intention was that because there were too many laborers, especially kids, oh. there, was, there was this issue that these people can't count the white men's goats. Uh, so so you, now they must learn basic. They must learn this basic basic numeracy to be able to maybe to understand Africans and also to count. A white man's goals. So just, it's like just, you were groomed to become the next generation of farm yeah. laborers. So then we, 1977, and then uh, our parents just decide just to to move to, from to the move. script. No, to say no, no, because they were seeing other people sending theirs. Hmm. Then they just said, uh, "Mommy and my sister can go there," and then we went there. Uh, that was 1977, but uh, the the issue was that it was not even an issue. We mm. went to school, but it was a school combined with child labor, because uh, <laughs> you you farm. Yeah, you go you go you go to school in the morning. Yeah. Uh, lunch time, you know this thing called feeding schemes that we see today. Yeah. The white people have been doing them during lunch and then. Uh, there was a cooker who cook for everyone. All school children, you go and eat there. Mm. But after two o'clock, you all go to, yes. the, to, to the tobacco field 
Ziyash. They started in, and at the end of, of the month, then there was one rand, I think one rand or two rand. And then we were getting used to money at, at an early age. And it was better because at the end of the month, then you all go to the white man's shop, then you buy, and then life was so good. But then, but then that was Maranchi Primary School at Pond Rift, mm. that was at the border. But then, uh, please, sorry, sorry to interrupt mm. there. How, how did you leave your farm, like your house, to school? Did, did you have a bus or did you have transport? What, what no, happened? No, 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 no. I was even staying with my aunt, my mother's sister, who was employed on that farm. In the farm? In the farm. But we, we, we walked to school. And uh, as children, and remember, by that time, there's heavy rains. By that time, mm. tobacco plantations. Sometimes you walk over the field that is hot. It, it was a mess, but unfortunately, we did not stay there for, for three. I did not stay there for three months with my sister because mm. uh, one of the condition was that uh, they were, the owners of the farm, they said they do not really accept the children whose parents are not working at, the, at their farm. Oh, then, that's, they, that's, then, then they decided that no, 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 no. This is not Miriam's children. She can't keep them here, mm. uh, and then and then later my pa our parents decided then we were taken to another primary school again at at all days. So, Prof, if your parents didn't move you to your aunt, mm. you now you could be somewhere right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was some it was something like that, but mm. but there was also people starting to re realize that education is important. Because when that white man said, no, 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 he cannot keep the children whose parents are not working on his plantation farm. Mm. And therefore our parents took us to another school again at all days. Mm. Now which was closer to, to the village town of all days. Mm. But it was also far from our farm. But we, that's where I, 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 I think I spent there for two years. For two mm. years, I there. Then I did, so I have to do that. It was the same, nineteen seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Then seventy-nine, another farm near to our farm opened another school again. Mm. But the problem with those farm school is that you cannot go from up to grade seven. I think it was up to standard four. I don't know what it's called today. I think grade six, mm. and therefore. Uh, there was no grade seven or standard five at mm. that time. Mm. And then our parents then decided that they move us to a trust farm called Daibos. Now we're going to a village now. My first time in the village. Now you're going to interact with a lot of people. Uh, now you're, going to interact you're with part the, of the community with a lot now. Of people. And the, the worst challenge was that uh, when I was attending the farm schools, of course I attended three farm schools before mm. going to the village, we were... I know people talk about Bantu education and some of them do not even know what Bantu education is because at farm school, we were taught everything in vernacular. Social science, I think it was called Tutale Aho, mm. health, 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 health education called Jama Pelo, mm. and geography, I think it was called Tuta Matlali. Kaspedi? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tekuluho. Seriously? And, and then now I have to go to the village. When you go to the village, then they said, no, the curriculum here is English. This my, is geography. My first time to know that there is geography, which is called geography, there is health education, and there is, a, because to me, even in mathematics, even, even in power. Mm. So to know that, so, 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 so now I'm going to do grade seven now. And then by that time, it has a, a, a certificate in 1982. People were writing what they call common papers. Mm. And then now you have to start learning English for the first time. Mm. And, but uh, I showed them flames in any way. That's uh, when you realize your academic prowess there. Yes. Well, there's yeah, something yeah. different about yes, you. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, within three months, I was... Cope, I have coped and, and superseded that the principal, I mean, teacher started saying, hey, be we careful have, of this guy. From we have the, fire from now. From the farm. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh. you have to learn now questions in English. Mm. You didn't have 
questions in English, except when we were doing a English as a subject. Oh. Yes. And fast forward, mm. when now the transition from, uh, I would say, high school mm. to tertiary, when you start uh, to go to tertiary, what happened? Where did you go? Did you go to a college? Did you, like, what happened? Mm. I wouldn't go to a college. Mm. I didn't want to go to a college. And every, most of the people were going to the college. Most of the people yeah. were going to the college. Mm. And then uh, when I, 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 I was told that I am smart. Okay. And therefore, I, I, I have always have a vision to go to the university. You were told you are university material. I was told I was a university material. Mm. And uh, my other brother, uh, when I was doing Standard 5, yes, he was my brother, uh, but of my father's uncle. I remember I was doing stand five. You know, you know, at the time you were doing stand five, you were even barefooted and then uh, topless niggas of today. Our you time you we were, were doing the real topless. <laughs> topless because not, not, we were not even wearing shirts, shirts yeah. or t-shirts by yeah. then. No Nike time. cap. You were just... Then this brother of mine <laughs> just said one day, because there was this thing in the family that the, the, everyone could say you are smart. I don't even know where he knew. He said, but... This boy is going to be a professor one day. And I don't even think he knew what a professor is because he himself did not even go mm. up to a level of, 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 of grade 10 of today. Yeah. I don't know one would live a professor. What about professor? Mm. Yeah. I don't forget those words. I was doing grade, grade 7 at Taibos. Mm. And then when he saw me, he just stopped in his car and then he started talking. He was with people. And then... And then I had to live by that when I was doing my, 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 my high school. That I, though I did not even know what a professor is in any way. I don't, I, neither do I even think he knew what a professor is, but I regarded that as a prophecy. I, th so. I think prof, this, this also uh, is something that should let us be aware of what we say to our kids mm. or to young people. Mm. You don't know what you are actually imprinting in the person's mind. Mm. And when someone who didn't even understand what the professor yeah. is told you you'll be a professor yeah, and then you my, carried my, that my, with you. My, my, my to be a professor. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Then you went to which university? Then uh, I, I passed uh, my grade 12 or from 5. Standard 10. Standard 10 in yeah. 19... That was the 1987 examinations. Yeah. But I was also a very a person who takes chances a lot during my time. I, I, in 1986, I registered uh, Standard 10 while I was doing uh, Form, form 4. Yes, I was doing Form 4. I registered for both my Standard 10 and Form 4 at the same time. But my Standard 10 part-time. Yeah, and then... Uh, in 19, I was so hopeful that I will pass well. Mm. So in 1987, uh, in January, when the when both my my results come from from four and from five, they are both good. They, they, yeah, the from five was not good. It was it was a symbol called EE mm. EE that you missed an examination by three percent or so. Yes, I remember it was from between 40 and Between 40 and 44. Yeah. And 44. Remember, I come from that era. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then I was so disappointed mm. because I wanted to pass metric before I go to metric. Eh. But then <laughs> then I passed, but I passed with an EE. And yeah. then teachers by then were saying to me, no man, you, you know some people can't even manage FS. It was, so, Pella, in those days, it was celebrated uh, to get that EE pill. Yes, I got it. It's a big deal. And then I had two, now I'm thinking twice whether I should go to school again or I should use the EE. But then I was confused and then uh, I, I did not really attend uh, my high school well between January until May when another teacher from Mama Volo who was teaching me said, no man. Let's forget about that certificate. Mm. You are, we know you have a metric, but you are not a material, an EE material. Mm. Then, come back. They can then come back. Then I came back around May, then to be serious, but but then I got a 
uh, a D then, which was also celebrated, mm. but because of family, I mean financial problems, mm. then then like I'm saying, my parents were farm workers, so it was very clear that you will not they will not afford university fee, not not even a college fee by then. I I just wanted to understand how did you enter the tertiary? Like what happened there, and which tertiary institution did you start with? 1988, I became a prim, private teacher to save money to go to, 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 go to a university. Mm. Then 1989, the 6th of February, I got admission at the then University of the North. I remember the, the queue was starting from, I don't know what you call In it. In 19 we, what? 1989. Yeah. We call it, a, we, during our time, we call it Tintis. By that time, at the University of the North, to get to get into into the the campus, you need to have paid. So, we we'll come there, we queue uh, for our applications. The queue was studying there. There was no standard bank by that time. Those buildings, there was nothing just just. Mm. And then I remember just the sixth of February, and then after receiving my student card with my friend. You are admitted? Yes, that we are admitted. We we kneeled down and then we kissed our student cards. That was a dream? That the future. You are in the university? I'm in the university now. <laughs> Farm boy. Yes, and then now we're so happy. So happy, unfortunately, my hey. friend, who was even more, 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 I will say, people do not admit that. I think he was more intelligent than me. Mm. So, but we... We, we attended well for the first year, but the second year, it, it was, it was, he couldn't come back. But I, no, sure. I, I, I continue. I what, what did you study? What was your first degree? Uh, my first degree that I studied is Bachelor of Arts in Education. Mm. And it, there is a serious controversy with that because when I went there, I wanted to do BPROC or be yours because all my life I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm. I did not even, not until on the day I, I did my, my graduation party, then I realized that I have done education in state of law. Mm. That, 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 was, that was, was something that I, I did not want to do education. There are two things that I did not want to do. That was education and public admin. <laughs> and look at you now. You are a champion in public yeah. admin. Yeah, there were two things. Yeah. Two things that I didn't want to do in my life. Mm. That was public admin and education. So here you are now. You have a degree, Bachelor's of Arts in Education. Mm. What happens? Where do you go there? I I studied education. The reason was that uh, education was something that uh, when you study it during our time, principals will recruit you when, when you are doing your third year. Yeah. And then uh, there was a problem with uh, the legal field by that time that we were seeing many people who did law who were not employed. And that became, for a person who comes from a family that was not good it's financially, you wouldn't do a, a risky uh, oh, qualification. You need something that, something that can, you can easily earn something. As for, as for public admin, I, I did not understand why one will go to a university to study an administrative degree when when people people in administration were employed with a a, a grade 12 certificate mm. so so there was that perception that i would not do something like that i remember i even rejected an offer to work uh, i should i should have because uh, i think in 1988 when i chose I chose teaching when I was given an offer to come and work as an administrative uh, officer in the Department of Justice at the Magistrate 
uh, uh, district by them. Mm. I refused that. So when I did my honors, of course, in Africans. Africans? Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. My Africans was, was very good. Mm. I, even my first position in the in academia was appointed as a junior lecturer in the Department of Africans to teach teachers. No, I guess work up by one Africans. the best Africans have brought in the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 I did Africans and then uh, in 1997 after I graduated my honors in Africans then things were changing. That was 90 1990, 90, 90, 97, yes. Th things were changing in the country. That's because after the, the, yeah, new, demo the, the new democracy. Then yes. things were changing to say, uh, because people were saying the language has to be killed because the language of the, the oppressor and so on and so on. Mm. And therefore, but I did not really, I, was, I did not really get into a situation where I become frustrated because after completing my my, 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 my honors, and then I was enjoying the teaching of Africans. Then the University of Limpopo opened uh, 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 Park, mm. and then they were recruiting for people with interim degree programs, MBA, MPA, and Master of Development Studies. Mm. Then I was recruited. I was one of those to, who have been to come recruited. study or teach. To come, to come study. Yeah. Then when I was, then I had an opportunity to do either public admin or or a, or development studies. Mm. Not business admin because I was not coming from the. I was not in business. But then still here yeah, I have a problem of choosing between the two. Development of public admin. And public admin. I didn't like public admin because to me, it, I, I have always regarded it as a clerical qualification because that's what we've been made to believe. Mm. And then uh, where I grew up, there's one mistake that you must not do in life. <laughs> and then there's one thing about me that my colleagues knows about me when I was at TEF. Mm. Uh, when we were in the MBCs and the MBLs of the university, when we were arguing about, because there was a time that we sit together as, as students and then we argue about the importance of qualification. Yeah, you break about. You break about. Mine is relevant. Mine is relevant. I'm going to be employed in... Mm -hmm. I remember there was this guy from Aram who I was doing be admin. I said to him, you know, with your be admin, not even a right leaner will call you. <laughs> so we're always making fun. Yeah, of I each understand. Other. Yeah, <laughs> fun yeah. of each other on that. Mm. And then we we do, we did that. And then I had that I did not recognize that discipline at all. That even when I had the opportunity to choose, I said I am not going to study. MPA because it's a clerical qualification. I don't want to work for some, to do, to do a degree that uh, that uh, I'm going to be a clerk. I will not progress. I, I know uh, such debates. You know, Prof. I wanted to be a medical doctor so bad, yeah, yeah. and I was good. My metric results were very good, yeah. uh, one of the best. But in our era, there was this issue of engineering. Mm. So chemical engineering sounded very sophisticated and everything. And I also mm. understood chemistry very well. Mm. And someone I remember as we were bragging was saying, ah, oh, you're going to deal with blood. People will die, that's it. Is that what you want to do with your life? Yeah. Come, you know, engineering yeah. field, you're going to think, come up with new things. And I only knew when I got to work, I worked for Otafed and worked for Sasol. Mm. It didn't even take me a month mm. to realize I'm in a wrong place. Yeah, the wrong place. And it's one regret I carry with. Yeah. And as I moved, I also got a scholarship to go to Cuba mm. to do medicine. Mm. But by then, I tasted money. Tasted money. Uh, yeah, because we, we started working at Sasol at a very early age and we were 
paid very well. Yeah. So I tasted money and I was like, and that's when my dream of being a doctor. Very dumb. Yeah, it, it, it went. Every time I, and I'm thinking with me being innovative and in mm. business, ah man, get the way they said you go to village, it's not a problem, man. Yeah. 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 But now I get you, I get what that. Yeah, mm. I, I, I had too much resentment on public, admin. on public administration. But then you chose it. Then I, I, I refused to check, I, I refused. I, ref I, ref I refused to do it mm. at Masters. And then instead I said I'd rather do development management. Okay. But of course, people say it's an equivalent in any way you study. It's about government and development. More or less the same subject. But, uh, yeah. but, it's, uh, but I did not want that uh, notion of the pub admin. public administration on my certificate. But then the problem comes after I have completed my my master's in development management. Mm. Then I went to universities, I want to do development management. I think now then God closes everything. Yeah. I went to vets, at least vets, I, I, uh, they were saying public and development management. I, I, are you employed by then or? I'm, I'm, yeah, I was employed, but in education. a teacher. Yeah. In education, mm. and then uh, I went to start. I went to UP. They did not even listen to me. I went to. I went to. Toranza African State University. Then, they did not listen to my development. I went to. UNISA. Prof. Kellen, let I team I. To UNISA, they yeah. did not even uh, listen to my development. Mm. But there was this guy at at TUT, then Technical Pretoria. Yes, was saying to me, "Look, and remember, in two thousand, I got a position to teach in the public administration. Two thousand two thousand and one, mm. I teach I teach in public administration, but I don't want to do public." Where? At the university? Yes. Yeah. TUT Pulukwani campus. Yeah. From, I think it was from 2001 up to 2008. Mm. But still, I don't want to do public administration. But I can't see that I am already in. So there was this guy who was, who was a, a doctor. He said, I see you're a very good... Uh, you have serious um, academic potential. Because Did you I, publish anything by then? Yes, I have already published something with them. Mm. And then they said, no, 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 man. Let us register you in the department. I said, no, I don't want to do public admin. Oh. Do you have development? He said, no, we don't do development here. There's, there was not even a development. He said, no. Otherwise, there is no difference between development and, mm. and, and, and public admin. So they, in, they, they wanted you to do a doctoral yes. in public admin? and I refused. Almost for, from 2000, you know what? I refused. I refused. Then after the, all the universities have rejected me, I mean, in mm -hmm. the little bit. But then yeah. I, after three years, then I went to the same person. I said, I, no, no, no. I mm -hmm. think now I'm ready to do public admin. Then he took me, was so happy to his HOD in Pretoria. They registered me. They said I must submit a proposal. Then after I submitted a proposal, the HOD poached me from everyone and said, this is the person we have been waiting for. Because of the, your, your research proposal? Yes. He said, no, this is the only person who could write a proposal that makes sense in this department. Mm. And then they fought. I remember at some stage, I because the person who introduced me is not the one who supervised me. Mm. That, the, the HOD, they said, no, the HOD just poached you. He is saying, no, you are his and he doesn't even know you. Then I talk to him. Sometimes. Oh, I understand that and dynamic. Then yeah. I'm, then I, then I, <laughs> at some point, I call him to say, no, but Prof, don't you think hey, it would be better if Dr. Haycock helped me? Uh, no. He, he said, look, students have no... <laughs> yeah, no you, you have no say in this matter. have no say in this matter. It's the department. Yeah. And there was the HOD. And he took me. Mm. And that guy, he molded me. Wow. And then he respected me. And I think within 
18 months or so, our PhD was ready for examination. Mm. And he was very much uh, vocal mm. to, to the people to say, here yeah, I have people that claim to have done public admin from one, two, honors. Who came masters, with public admin masters, from, yeah. But these people can't write a proposal that is acceptable. But here is a person whose undergraduate is not public admin, but he has now completed before anyone. You guys are still far away from even studying them. So, and, and remember, Prof, mm, as you know, in, mm. in some cases, people take about three years for their proposal to be accepted. To be, Just a proposal. Just a proposal. Yeah. yeah. But, but mine, mine was, but I, but, but I always think uh, it was all the will of God that I was in the wrong discipline. So then I started regretting that I wasted four years, I mean, two to three years rejecting to be registered. Mm. And then uh, after I have registered, I did not even take two years to to complete. To complete about eighteen months, my dissertation was ready for examination, and then then I passed so well, and uh, I think I became the first to to graduate in, in, under, under after after the major between a, a technical preparatory and those technicals. Mm. And my supervisor was so he he mentored me so well. So now I have a role to play in public administration, a role that when I was, I was growing up says, I don't want anything to do with I can go at lake. I don't want to be at luck. Mm. And then I become a, a person who's behaving that discipline today. Mm. Uh, but I just believe that I think that's what God has put in place for me. And many people do not know that, uh, uh, like I am saying, uh, I was giving an example that you don't say this girl is ugly when you grow up because mm. you are going to marry that girl. Mm. So to those people who's, who would say something bad about other things, you might uh, end up. You might end up being, God, God might end up showing you that uh, you know nothing. You must not talk about things. Mm. My father used to say, uh, when I didn't take us to Tuvarin, was a serre, Wolo Limwana, or Wolo with a Wolo. Need to refresh and unwind? Come to Wild Things at Meropa Casino and Conference Center, where you get to enjoy quad bags, swimming pools, water park, restaurants, kids' games, reptile park, camping, birds park, and many other activities. So, we, we, we don't know anything when we grew up. Something that you say, I will never do. Ish. One day you become a person who must be ahead of that. I, I met my friend whom I used to, to mock. One day I, we met in Pretoria, Wanda Park. And then, and then we were exchanging cards. He, was, he, he went to the bank and then I gave him a card. And then he saw... <laughs> he it. must have laughed. He said, he said, what? You said you have a document in what? Then I said, uh, public, uh, you, <laughs> you, who said that? Yeah. Then I said, I, I'm ashamed, but that's what I have now. Mm. That's what I have. But now, Prof, when you have a doctorate, where, where are you working now? Are you teaching at TUT? Are you, where are you? Uh, my doctor, I was at TUT. When, when I had a doctorate, I was at TUT, but I was working as a part-time, but full-time I was employed by the department. Working where? But I was full. I was at TUT Pulgwan Campus as a part-time lecturer, yeah. but I was full-time as a curriculum advisor in the Department of Education. Okay. So, 2006. You remember I I graduated in 2006. Mm. 2006 when I when 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 I graduated I I mean the University of Limpopo gave me a a, a part-time position February 2006. Uh, on the base that they saw that I was completing my my PhD, mm. but uh, and then around June I received the results of a pass, and then uh, but that was after the University of Limpopo has appointed me permanently from April two thousand and six. Okay, but then 
everything was so peaceful. Everyone loved me. And then uh, in September, I mean, was it July? I received my results and then I submitted them to, to the director's office, K Block. Mm. I think that's the office that you know. I later occupy. I didn't know that I'll occupy that position. Mm. That that is today the director of the school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, when I submit uh, the the results to the secretary of the director, then uh, Mrs. Sophie Bubabi, she said to me, I was so happy that look, I completed my doctorate. Give this to the director, mm. the school. I was a lecturer, remember. And then she said to me, I, I, I pity you with your, with your happiness and love. Then I said, what? She said, today is the beginning of all your problems, your troubles at this university. <laughs> it, is the first time that, it is the first time from tomorrow we'll start, we'll start knowing that uh, uh, you are a bad person, in actual fact, it's the first time of your travel. Ziyakala. Yeah, I thought she was joking. Indeed, after that introduction, then the next time there was an issue, discussions to transfer me to other departments without my knowledge. You know, academia can be very toxic, honestly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just small things, sometimes it's even personal things. Uh, I know even the dynamics of you send a proposal and then it causes problems mm -hmm. amongst the lecturers who wants who must supervise you. Mm -hmm. And I also know sometimes somebody supervising you, you don't, uh, you're not producing anything, you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. When you want to change mm -hmm. how the person feels and how the person now starts to mark you as an enemy. Mm -hmm. So, but there's so much that happens in academy. I think you have seen it all, you know. So now, Matata Toma Banu. Yes, that's the beginning of the mm. mother of all the problems and yeah. troubles. But besides the problems, then you are now in public admin. Yes. Uh, uh, you are serving the, I don't know, what is your, what is your role there? Are you a senior lecturer? Or like, what are you? Uh, my role. Remember, my role started as a lecturer, mm. go through a senior lecturer, associate professor, mm. then full professor. But please walk us to the journey from senior lecturer to associate. Like, if you can still remember some of the incidents and what did you do to when you start to apply, to start to believe that maybe now I need to start to fight to be a professor. Uh, now, at the university, things are very, are very clear and they are very simple. Uh, at a, a university like the University of Limpopo, hmm. when you get your PhD, uh, you automatically qualify to be a senior lecturer. You now can sit at high places. At high places. You can be a senior, yeah, you can be hmm. a senior lecturer. Hmm. And then that process, I went through it. Uh, there were some trouble, like I've said, the, be the beginning of, yes. of all the trouble. The troubles start, are everywhere. St started with that. Yeah. But then uh, the director of the school, then uh, I think it was Professor Defelias. Ah, Professor Defelias did not, was not really a person who listens to, to people that are less mm. progressive. And then my, 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 my promotion then was es easy. It was easy, especially yeah. because then in the Department of Public Administration, all people in the department were ill-qualified. Mm. Were ill-qualified, so... And you were performing. And, and, and I, was very, I was very much uh, performing and, and, mm. and, 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 and having the highest qualification that no one had in the department. Producing papers. Yeah. And, and then they, they mm. did. But, uh, but the, a, a journey to the associate professorship Mm. I think it took three years. Huh. Yeah, I think it took three years because I, it's very easy. The university policies are very clear that uh, if you have supervised, if you have published a certain number of articles, mm. uh, then you qualify to be an associate, you must apply. Mm. Ah, but that's where now, 
now now the issue of 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 of, of a degree in education comes in that that's where the issue in development management comes in. That's where the issue of doctorate in public administration now has to be analyzed. That way, did it what did it focus on? So, yeah, I, so, I, I want so to the, so I want to control this interview. That yeah. uh, maybe there will be a special day where we yeah. deal with these challenges that you faced yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, at length. Yeah. But uh, I want us to focus on. Like you moving, not necessarily <laughs> there was a tire puncher, you fixed <laughs> it and everything. Uh, just to keep this, because I want yeah. people to understand where you come from, where you are. Because mm. you are now impacting Africa, you are impacting mm. the whole world. Mm. Mm. I was at uh, Ipada last year. Yes. I saw people from Brazil, people mm. from mm. Singapore yes. Yes. coming yes. To, to, to something yes. Yes. that is started by a farm boy. Yes. Yeah, so I want us to move there because <laughs> okay. if we dwell on, uh, uh, yeah. we, we might take time. We might take time. I, okay. I might be tempted to talk about my things. <laughs> to, to talk about, to talk yeah. about politics. I know you yeah. must just just yeah. understand that uh, uh, in academia, it's a, it's a, it's, they say, dog eat dog or eat dog eat dog. Uh, it's not easy. For people mm. to to move, especially uh, progressing. Mm. So for you to progress, you must know if you want to know that uh, in reality, there is the there is Saturn. But you know why? Why? What's my theory around mm. this thing? Mm. Yeah, most of you, you you worked very hard. You had to move mountains more than what you have to do academically to yeah. be where you are. Mm. And the way it was so tough. Mm. And it was made by people to be tough. Mm. And that is a legacy that you end up, I'm not saying you did that or you are doing that. Mm. You now end up becoming the very same person doing that to other people because they make it look like it's too difficult uh, 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 to be something. You are no longer dealing with uh, statutes and administrative problems. Mm. You are dealing with individuals who are saying, he can't sit with us mm. uh, or he must sweat. I'll, I'll give an example. Uh, uh, I mean, a research proposal, if you understand what you're doing, mm. is something that we must sort out within mm. three months. Mm. But other institutions, they will make you sweat. Take mm. two years. Mm. Where you'll do a proposal, bring it back, it comes. After six months, they're still correcting it. Uh, towards the end of the year, you go and present it. Mm. When you present it, it is marked red. Mm. Before you know it, the mm. year it's over. Over something, I mean, we're talking about a 20 page document. Mm. And uh, I understand what you're talking about that as you try to now ascend, mm. uh, uh, now people look at you as, hey, this man Pele is coming to sit with us where we are sitting. Mm. And that's why I'm even against that. You are a master student, mm. you are supervising an honor student, mm. or you are a PhD student mm. supervising a master student who can be like you. Mm. I, I, th I think it's a problem. You are mm. a master student supervising someone who's doing honors, who next year mm. can sit as your equal. Mm. That's what also I believe I haven't, I don't have empirical evidence. It is the reason we have problems of people actually ascending. We must have professors dealing with a PhD Mm. Student, mm. I, I guess you understand that. Problem. I understand. Yeah. yeah, we must have someone who knows that mm. before you become me, you must start be a senior lecturer, mm. be associate. Mm. Not automatically you are going to be like me. Mm. That's why uh, uh, people complicate academy. I always say that people make academia to look like it's something you, you need to wear glasses and sit. That's why I mm. can go to a gig, mm. take drink whatever I drink, mm. go home, mm. open books and work. Mm. Because I made it a lifestyle. So mm. people made it look like you must wear a suit mm. and a tie, mm. then open a book. And mm. I've, I've seen even in, in um, conferences mm. where people try so hard to act intelligent. Mm. Where you can't even get to know real people. Real people. Like someone, everything must be analytical. Oh, nice meeting you. Where are you from? Mm. Uh, me coming from my background is a... It's a combination of many other things that mm, mm. is trying to explain even a simple process. Mm. So I get you, Prof. Mm. 
you were about to sit yeah. with people who thought maybe it's not time mm. for you to join them. That's why you experience what you have experienced. Experience. And then I want to dedicate a day for that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We are moving now. Okay. You become an associate professor. Then the journey to be a full professor starts. Then to be a full professor starts. And then uh, it was also not easy. Mm. But uh, at the end, people realized that you cannot, you cannot stop it. And therefore, they did it's it. inevitable. It's in, in, inevitable. And mm. then it, it happened like that. And remember. Yeah. So, the Prof, let's just I, wrap up the interview. We'll, we'll deal with that. Yeah. I, I, mm. I always tell people that uh, they must remember when they are dealing with people like, like myself mm. that I grew up on a farm. Yeah. Where when people when where when you were born you have no vision no you no one dreams of going to the university you, you have no vision mm. uh, you you have no future mm. but you live with what 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 life gives you that's where I come from. I come from all days. And I'm proud. All days is not a well-known place mm. in South Africa, but it's a very small, small village town. That's where I come from. Yeah. That's where I believe that when we grew up, we grew up with no vision, mm. not knowing the future, because you have to accept what, they, what, what life gives you. Gives you, ne? Yes. Grew up on a farm. So this thing that I don't understand that... Uh, Remember, on a farm, as a young boy, when you grow up, uh, the white man will give you things that you go and share. Mm. I have learned that. He will give you a, an 80 bag of, of milli milli and say, okay, you are a family for go and share. And then when people are sharing there, there will be those who will be grabbing, want to grab more than the other. Mm. But my father used to teach us that uh, you don't have to fight for for anything. If something is not yours, it's not yours. Mm. And even if he was a man who did not really have money to provide, but he said, when you want to go to the university, you will go. And often I ask myself, how am I going to go? Because he's, he's, he's not a... He, he doesn't have money. He's a poor man. But he's a poor man. But mm. he will say, no, when, if you want to go to the university, you'll go. You don't have to complain. I'm one of those who will complain, who want to know what will happen next year. He will mm. say, if you want to go, you'll go. It's not a problem. Just, 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 just relax. And indeed, when the year comes, you'll see things just opening themselves up. And then everything becomes possible. And at the end, you do. You were not promised material because there was no material. You grow up when your parents will not promise you material, but it's not there. Mm -hmm. But they will tell you that don't worry, everything will happen. And indeed, when the time comes, you will just see doors opening. Yeah. And then you finish and then you become whatever you want to become. So, Prof, now you are a full professor. Yes. Uh, uh, what happens there? Do you get... Uh, to be appointed to another position, like what, what do you what do you start to deal with as your insight? That's my I, I, I don't get your like question. I want I want I want us to discuss your journey right mm. from associate professor now you become a full professor. Yeah, okay. full professor. I don't know if you still remember the year. Yeah, uh, twenty fourteen. I guess twenty fourteen. Yeah. Now you become a full professor. Mm. You continue to to work. Do you apply for positions inside? Uh, uh, whether it's director, whether it's HOD, what happens? Uh, normally, uh, maybe I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm revealing something. I am not a person who, who has ever pl applied for, for a job, mm. uh, except except in January nineteen ninety three when I, I started looking up for my first job. Okay, which yeah. I got. I normally I'm not a person who has ever applied for a for a job except that one. Mm -hmm. That one when I started working. Okay. The University of Limpopo, okay. TUT uh, when it was called, it was called uh, technical preparatory. 
I did not really apply for that. I was called to come and and help in the Department of Public Management. Okay, so now fine. You are a, you are a full professor now. What happens? Who called you somewhere? Now? I guess you are a professor. Mm-hmm. After you become a professor, mm-hmm. you you got a call for a position. What happened? Because I believe you held a senior position yes. at the University of Limpopo. Yes. Yeah. As a, as, as, as a direct. As a direct. As a direct. Mm. Uh, no, I, I, I have not been... When, when I have been called uh, with regard to the, my, my loyalty... I I I I I I I have I have, I have not responded positively, okay. Because uh, of my loyalty, and my loyalty always lied with the University of Limpopo. Mm. I I was I was recruited, especially for deanship and by other universities, mm. because I was a successful director at the University of Limpopo, and many people, in the universities knew my my success. They will, they will recruit me. But I don't remember accepting to go to go oh. outside, outside. You could have went anywhere. I could have went anywhere yeah. when the time allowed me to do that. So yeah, so. I, I, I want to understand something, Prof. You get fulfillment from because you have produced a lot of students, and I think maybe you know one at me mm-hmm. personally. My attachment to the University of Limpopo is that I've seen it transform the lives of poor people, people from the villages. I've seen people who came there with nothing and become something from the very mm. same university, University mm. of Limpopo. And then I'm saying that, did you get fulfillment in terms of your contribution? Because you, there are people you nurtured from first year who couldn't even construct a sentence. Mm. You mm. came with them. Mm. They got their degrees. Mm. They got honors. Mm. Selected to do masters. Mm. Mm. Then a few selected to be PhD students, mm. and you mentored them, and you got them out of the mm. system. And these people are important somewhere. Yes. They are making a difference yes. because of your effort. Mm. I don't know. Do you get? How do you feel about that? How does it make you feel? Uh, that makes me feel good. But I want to respond to you in this way. In academia mm. or in life. There are people who say one thing, I mean, one sentence or one statement, mm. and that it changes your life. Mm. Uh, there is, there is an, I, I'm, I, I'm influenced by the statement and the vision of one uh, professor, Ephraim Mukhalo. Not Mukhalo, why do I say Ephraim Mukhalo? I want to say Ephraim Mukhoko. No, they are similar names, yeah. Yeah, they are, they are same names, always uh-huh. confuses, you know. When uh, Ephraim Mohokon took over Medunza hmm. as a VC, he said his intention in academia. Hmm. I mean, 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 his intention as a leader of that institution. Hmm was to make sure that uh, he changes a head boy from Katangkul yes. into a doctor. Wow. He changes a head boy from Venda into a doctor. All those people that people see as their future is to be head boys and Eesh. women that draws water in their villages into doctors for the future. Mm. And uh, those are the statements of visionaries that if you listen to them, you can do change into uh, the entire uh, globe. Mm. So when I joined academia, I set the same vision that when I retire, uh, I should have changed women who were supposed to be drawing water and boys who should have been working the scrapyards mm. into doctors and contributing to academia. Mm. 
and uh, I did that. There is no one at the University of Limpopo who can claim that uh, he has in 16 years produced 50 masters and 14 doctoral degrees. Wow. The last time I saw the University of Limpopo praising a woman mm. for major contribution and that he taught the principal, Professor Mkhalo, was, wow. prof, was Professor Albert, and they said in 50 years... Oh, that old woman, in, eh? in 50 years, they were praising her for having produced eight, eight, eight PhDs and not less than, and not more than 10... Master's, master's degrees. Master's degrees, but she taught them. But they said the university is proud of... Professor, you produced more than 50 master's students. Yes. That record, I don't think uh, any person who started working at the university with me mm. can beat that record. So, so, but, 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 but that's been what it is. But that mm. was my, my intention that, that uh, I, I, I needed to change the life, but I, but I did. I did. did for yeah. that short space of time. I I did. I did. But but remember, it's not like I am. I'm I'm, I'm still I'm still I'm still I'm still doing the same job work. Mm. I still have PhDs under me that I'm still supervising today. Mm. I still have masters that I'm supervising. I'm still contributing to South African universities through publications and the like. One other thing that I want now to get on because mm. uh, to get in is that. I remember when I met you for the first time. Mm. You were having, you organized your students to have writers retreats. Mm. Your, your staff mm. and students. Mm. You were having a writers retreat. I think it was in Zanin. Yes. And remember, I'm from media studies. Yes. But I learned from a friend that there's a retreat. If you can come there, spend a week with us, mm. you'll push your research. Yeah. And I came there sat at a corner, I was very much uncomfortable, okay. thinking that if you see me, you're going to chase me away. No. And yeah, and I remember we went on lunch. When we went on lunch, you came to me, said, how are you, gentlemen, good, are you making progress? Mm. That's all you asked me. Mm. I don't think you still remember. <laughs> like, I don't remember. And that time, remember, I'm eating your food mm. for free. Mm. And I felt welcome mm. that day. Mm. And I learned how to uh, really, really put together mm. a publication mm. through, because you'll have moments where you explain to your students, this is how it's done. When you want to change your thesis to, uh, uh, to be a publication, this is what you need to do. And I learned mm. everything for free. Mm. And then you started something that I think that Africa should celebrate, mm. IPAD, mm. which I want us now to get on it. Mm. Mm. And I think... One of my first few publications was with, with you mm. through your guidance and also your team because I would write and it will come back red telling me I should do this and it will help me, but I will work on it. Mm. But you realize that as you work on it, you grow mm. in it. And I want to commend you for that because I've seen the hopes. I've seen you turning people into real academics. Mm. And don't worry. One day that song will be set mm. for you. Prof. Just keep on doing your job because I, I can tell you that I'm a living example now. Um, I'm a DJ who can actually be proud that I've got a number of articles mm. Mm. and they are inspired by your work. So I want us to get into iPad. What influenced it? And please explain what it, it is in details for people to understand. Uh, iPad, it stands for International... Conference on Public Administration and Development Alternatives. Uh, it is an association of, of academics uh, from, from especially those with interest in public administration and development uh, uh, sciences. Mm. And being an international conference as it is, its 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 agenda is not it's not a national i mean we must be clear that it is not comparable to to the national association Those ones, yeah. in south africa it is mm. it its agenda is it's a regional and intercontinental i've attended one of your yeah. ipads in botswana in, yeah. in your early years in my early years yeah. yeah 
Yes, uh, because uh, its 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 agenda is is to ensure that uh, there is a, an interrelation between South Africa and regional and intercontinental scholars and also coming, even coming together to share global global to to share, to share mm. uh, knowledge production and you'll remember that uh, uh, the the founding principle of 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 ipad mm. was based on the fact that uh, there was this this uh, notion that of the global knowledge production Mm. Uh, Africa contributes only 1.25 percent of the knowledge production. 1.25. Yes, and therefore I was so worried. The whole of Africa. Yes, I was so worried that um, with this assertion being said, and uh, the international scholars being happy to say that uh, we contribute only. 1.25 percent of the global knowledge production mm. what it means is that we should be the the most consumers of 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 of, of a wrong knowledge because Im immediately people say but you we, we give you 90 percent and then you produce 0 0.25 it means that you are consuming theirs and you are not producing so it was along those lines that uh, uh, I have discussed with these other guys, uh, especially the Botswana guys and others, that, okay, let us put our hands together, the mm. Botswana, the Ugandans, and, and South Africans, that let us put our hands together mm. to ensure that uh, we increase this knowledge production. Yeah. And that's why you see that we make sure that uh, in in any IPAD event, there is there is there is there is there is there is, there is knowledge production in the form of of publications. Yes. Because uh, I it, it differs from other academic associations in the sense that other academic associations, I think people go there, they 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 still do what what the West want us to do. Mm -hmm. You go there. You pay registration fee, you buy wine, you drink, you go back home, and then you forget that uh, what you, what you were to the what what you were in the conference for. But we mm. always encourage that when people come mm. to our conference or or our association of academics, they must know that we want people that will contribute to knowledge production. We want the globe to know our issues. And you know what I'm impressed with, Prof? Yes. Which is something you're doing very well. Mm. The themes yeah. and the sub-themes of your, your, your conferences. Yeah. You are addressing African issues yes. and you are also decolonizing a academy, academy because we always find space to tell our story to tell our, yeah. uh, 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 in a very way that we understand them very well and and that is something that i think you you need to be commended on and you need to keep it up because you feel that you are addressing africa's challenges yeah. and communicating it with the world yeah. and people from outside yeah. and now i get the point that you realize that the knowledge is only produced mm. uh, by the west yeah. we are consumers mm. of that knowledge mm. we even uh, 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 become we replicate we, yeah. And, and we're not even sure if it's right, yes. but we replicate it. Okay. But with iPad, I can see, even when we engage in those sessions, we, when we talk about, for instance, municipalities, mm. we, we talk about water, yes. uh, healthcare services. Yes. These are things that affect us directly. Yes. And you, you, you still find people, I always tell people, you still find people who write about things that are even unrelated to us. Yes. Yes. That are from the third world, exactly. and and I understand what you're doing, and I think it's really a good thing. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. and I know we are going to Deben this year. Of course, we are going to Deben this year. Uh, me and my professor, uh, my producer, who's a professor, I call him Prof. Yes. He's your student, you know. Yes. You, you groomed him. 
Yes. yes. Um, we already booked accommodation. Okay. Already, okay, that's yeah. good. We already booked accommodation. For, don't worry, the conference money will come. The conference money. One way or the yeah. other. <laughs> yeah. It will come. But we are excited about it. And people must understand one thing. IPAD, mm. even when it started in 2016, was our, 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 we, we, we had what we call what, uh, we, 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 we collect fees. Mm. To, to do publications yeah and and to pay for 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 for, for, for the services yeah I didn't pay in 2016 uh, and in most cases we have people that do not pay and, yeah. and, and, and no one will rem- will tell will remind or say to me that by the I will remember you writing us or giving us legal letters to say hey you get Prof, I'm the them. culprit I've benefited <laughs> no, from it's, it. no it's not the culprit <laughs> no you know it's we, we bring people together we know yeah. that uh, in one way or the other mm. there are people that will pay mm. and then the project will be able to deliver yeah and then normally when people have not paid I think you know there are so many people from other universities even the University of Limpopo there were these people who were thinking that uh, IPADA is a personal benefit organization. Oh. So, so, they will, so they will not pay from the University of Limpop. But mm. they have never had me or anyone from the IPADA committee saying, hey guys, pay, 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 pay. Because we, as long as at the end of the conference we, mm. there are good people who have paid and then we are able to produce the production is our... That, 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 is, that, is, that is our... People don't our understand end. how... And the people works. do not understand. They mm. think maybe... Maybe, but we invest a lot on, on knowledge production. We, yeah. we ensure that there are conference proceedings, there are general special editions, and mm. there are book projects. I think you'll remember there's another book project that you contributed in. Yeah. And the one 2016 local government elections. I still remember my Pol- paper. Politics and administration. Yes. I was saying uh, the first chapter there, I think you... It was it was a chapter that I, I that I have written, mm. uh, in which I I was uh, predicting that uh, the ANC and and the EFF mm. uh, differences or the manner in which they are conducting themselves, mm. they are uh, indirectly strengthening the DA to take over the government. In 2016, in, you predicted in, that. In future. That if they continue like that, they are strengthening uh, the DA to take over. Tomorrow, we're so, going to, to see it happen. So, tomorrow. Mm. But so, 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 so now, when, when, when the politicians now are arguing that uh, the government of national unity might mean that we are hinting uh, over the government to to the whites again. Then I said, but that's what we have been warning. You that, uh, we have warned you that uh, when when we are uh, Africans and then we are differing, we must not differ in a way that when we are, we are fighting for something and then we let whom you call your common enemy grow. Hey. So 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 that collection, mm. it's, it's so people can can reflect on it. There are so many people you wrote from the media perspective. Mm. There are people who wrote and also other chapters that predicted, predicted uh, that uh, the ANC or the ruling government might see flames yes. in the future. And now those flames are now coming out clear. And by the way, those books are there yeah. uh, for people to buy, for, for people to, to really check. To, to, to read, yeah. Because the current political epoch has been predicted by academics in 2016. In 2016, yeah. Uh, and that is through mm. Ayapala, your, your, your project. Your project, yeah. yeah. So, so we did that. Prof, there's so much that uh, we need to discuss. And I also think for this platform, mm. uh, you'll be a blessing to us. I think if we have you at least once or twice a year, yeah. you, you'll come, especially with a knowledge perspective. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and yeah. honored that you came. Uh, I regard you as a giant. Uh, I regard you as a hero. And I wish many people can see that in you. Uh, with the number of people that I know that you have actually impacted positively in, in uh, their lives are actually changed because of your contributions. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to close the interview now. Uh, on that note that this is just the beginning. Mm. 
Okay. You just came to greet us today. Okay. Uh, when you come back, I will probe <laughs> on the challenges you were talking about. On the challenge that you are talking about. <laughs> yeah. There, 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 there are so many. There are so many. There are so many. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino, hosted by Son of Gazani. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments. Please uh, comment, criticize us, tell us what we are doing right and what we are doing wrong, because that is the only way this platform will grow. But we really appreciate you. We also appreciate that now we have 10,000 subscribers, uh, which is more now because of you, and we are a fairly new podcast. Keep well. Just talk with DJ Capuchin. <laughs>